a society are like super judgy of homeless people for being intoxicated, right? We're like, don't give him money. He might buy alcohol with it. <laughs> don't give her money. She looks like she's on drugs. We're like, yeah, we realize your life is one big 24 hour walking nightmare. But we demand that you be hyper alert. <laughs> for every minute of it. <laughs> Y'all, my life is awesome. My life is fucking awesome. I'm high all the time. <laughs> Just to tolerate my awesome life. <laughs> Do y'all think it means I've been living in LA too long so I put bottled water in my bong? <laughs> I totally do that. You think it means I've been living in L.A. too long? Because when people ask me how I'm doing, I reply, Google me. <laughs> have y'all noticed that a lot of people in L.A. have resting Coke face? <laughs> All my friends back in Georgia think the streets of L.A. are paved with gold. But we know the truth, right? We know the streets of L.A. aren't paved. <laughs> at all. What are they doing with that pot money? <laughs> this, uh, this guy was walking me back to my car one night after a gig, and he was like, Bobby, you shouldn't park next to the homeless encampment. You shouldn't park next to the shanty town. It's not safe. It's dangerous. And I'm like... Why? They're just homeless people. They're not criminals. Yo, I'm not scared of homeless people. Hell, every guy who ever tagged me had a job. <laughs> In a studio apartment. I always give homeless people $5, because what can you do with a dollar, right? And there's this guy near me. He draws Cookie Monster on his sign, and it is really well done. He, it's, it's flawless. He's obviously an artist. And he has a really bad limp. It takes him a long time to get to the car. So like, I don't know, like once or twice a week for the last year, I've stopped and given this guy $5. And y'all, the other day I saw him walking down the street normally. <laughs> right? I feel so betrayed. I just want to go, look, I can understand you lying to the rest of these assholes, but this is me. <laughs> we had a connection. <laughs> so basically for the past year, I've just been paying this guy to do improv. <laughs> but you know what, y'all? I'm still gonna give him $5 because probably the only reason he even came up with the limp is that it wasn't enough for people that he was simply starving to death. <laughs> people are like, oh, you hungry, buddy? Give us a limp. <laughs> It's really good though. We probably went to Second City. <laughs> so I was doing comedy in Santa Monica recently and this homeless man came in afterward and he was like, can I talk to you outside a minute? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> in here. And he was like, can I just talk to you outside? I said, you can talk to me in here if you want to. And he goes, I'll eat your pussy. <laughs> Like, well, it is tempting. <laughs> right? Like, he knew the one pickup line he used on me. <laughs> he fucking nailed it. <laughs> but <laughs> every one of my friends I've told this story to, y'all, every one of them was like, was he cute? <laughs> was he cute? No! He wasn't cute. Oh my God, yo, if he was cute, this would be the story about that one time that homeless guy ate my pussy. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I'm from Georgia and I, uh, I moved to LA for comedy. Yeah. Yeah, it's going great. Actually, when you do something like move across the country for your career, then suddenly your career starts taking on all this importance that it never did before. 
right? Like I told my friend one day, I said, here's my fantasy. And she leaned in, you know, like it was going to be good. And I was like, oh, no, it's not a sexual fantasy. It's a career fantasy. And then I realized all of my fantasies are career fantasies now. Yeah, I have no sexual fantasies left. Like, y'all, the other day, I caught myself masturbating to the image of me winning an Emmy. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was an Oscar. Because <laughs> yeah. that'll make you come like that. <laughs> So I've been doing comedy forever, and I'm at the point in my career now where people ask me a lot, hey, Bobby, why haven't you made it yet? Why haven't you made it yet? And I'm like, well, I mean, I've been on the cover of magazines. I've had my name in lights in Vegas. I had my face on a billboard in Hollywood. I paid all of my bills through comedy for most of my adult life. So. I mean, I kind of have made it. And they're like, no. I mean, made it, made it. When are you going to make it, make it? So y'all know how y'all uh, comedians who are in here, your family's only frame of reference for your comedy career is the TV. And not just the TV, but whatever show they watch on the TV. So if you're not on whatever show they watch on the TV, you have no comedy career. So it doesn't matter what I've accomplished in comedy, which granted isn't much. No matter what I've accomplished, it's never enough for my family. It's never, so y'all, I've decided the next time my family gives me shit about why I'm not more successful, I'm just gonna tell them I'm Banksy. <laughs> And then I'm going to tell him who Banksy is. <laughs> so I had a bad set recently when I wrote this joke. I had a bad set. And I was really sick. I was on NyQuil. And my head was so stopped up, I couldn't hear the jokes as they were coming out of my mouth. So my timing got messed up. I had a bad set. So uh, I was crying in the car afterward. Any car criers? Okay, okay, you feel me. So I was crying in the car afterward, and I looked over, and there was a homeless man sleeping in a doorway right next to my car. And I'm over here crying over having a bad set. So, y'all, I got out of my car, and I walked over, and I bent down, and I said to the homeless man, at least you didn't have a bad set. <laughs> It's about perspective. <laughs> and two of my comic friends were there, and my friend Matt was like, no, you were fine. You didn't have a bad set. No, really, you were fine. And I was like, well, maybe I was fine, right? Maybe I was fine. And then my friend John's like, yeah, you know, I was watching them when you were on stage, and I was like, wow, they really don't like her. <laughs> They really didn't like you. Like, they weren't even laughing at all. It's almost like they hated you. And I was like, you should work at a children's hospital. Cheer people up for a living. Y'all, here's what I've learned from hanging out with male comics. Any woman that won't fuck you is a bitch. Right? And any woman that will fuck you is a whore. So guys, I've got a tip, okay? You want that bitch to fuck you? Stop calling her a whore. <laughs> these, guys, I just, these guys, I wanna be like, I don't know who hurt you, but I know why. You know when you were kids and these boys would build a fort and they had the sign out front, you know, that read, no girls allowed? Well, they produce comedy now. <laughs> there are so many 
many young, straight, white dudes doing comedy. I can never tell if I'm watching Comedy Central or American History X. <laughs> There's a lot of misogyny in comedy, a lot. Some of these guys, I swear to God, like, they go home at night to, like, their dead mother in a rocking chair. <laughs> My rape jokes were the best tonight, mother. <laughs> I don't know why I can't get laid. My rape jokes kill. Y'all give it up for yourselves. So y'all, I got in a fight with this guy at my best friend's birthday party, because that's what I do. And he goes, all female comics ever talk about is sex. Male comics never talk about sex. I'm like, have you ever seen comedy? Like, have you ever been to a comedy show? Because uh, 20% uh, of dudes will just hump the stool. <laughs> and use the microphone as their dick. He goes, well, I used to date a comic, and all she ever talked about was her pussy. And I was like, oh, she meant you. <laughs> Her other pussy. <laughs> <laughs>